Hey everyone, welcome to the very first inaugural episode of the No Plateau Podcast. I'm your affable host, Pete Durand. Completely underqualified to be here, but that's why we have Henry Hoffman, an expert in all things neuro and stroke rehab related, and our producer, Kali Russo, is here as well, and she's going to make sure we stay in line. So Henry, this is our first one. I'd like you to kind of explain... Who should be listening to the podcast, and then we'll kind of get into your background. Sure, sure. Well, welcome everyone, and Pete, good to see you. Carly, thanks for helping us. Uh, the podcast is going to be geared towards stroke and brain injury survivors, their loved ones, students, um, caregivers, and anyone interested in learning how to help individuals suffering from a neurological injury improve. So we're really excited to talk about fun things ranging from stuff that works based on evidence. Um, there's, there's literally 3,000 randomized control trials out there on motor recovery, and 1,300 of them are on upper extremity. Yet people have no idea what actually works, what doesn't work, and they come, they call us or contact me. I've been doing this for over 20 years, and therapists get patients all the time saying, gee, I don't know what to do, I just suffered a stroke. So the hope with this podcast is to focus on answering key questions, challenging the status quo, um, providing solutions based on research, educating the audience, whether it's an OT, PT, a loved one, and really just helping them understand the process of neuroplasticity and where they can go to drive their uh, brain into new recovery. And it's amazing, you know, stroke, every 45 seconds, there's another stroke survivor. And the stroke survivors did not ask to be experts in stroke. So someone needs to help. And, and there's a lot of good therapists out there, and we hope to do our part here with the podcast. Let's just dig into that right now. So neuroplasticity, I mean, that was one of the terms you asked me right away when I, when I joined, uh, joined you in the effort to help stroke survivors. Uh, we're going to dig into that term and other terms, but let's set the stage here before we find out why you even care about this, Henry. So first of all, as you mentioned, a stroke every 45 seconds, roughly around 800,000 strokes a year. And most of those people have been pushed out of the healthcare system, out of therapy well before they're fully recovered. So there's roughly 8 to 10 million people in any given time who are still capable of living in an active lifestyle but don't know how to. And that's, that's a big part of who we're trying to reach. So, Henry, why don't you share the story of how you – became passionate about stroke and neural rehab, and then you actually started a company to focus on this. So maybe share some of that story, and then it'll help our, our listeners kind of get centered. Well, it actually started with my local prison guard when I was doing some community work. No, just kidding. Um, so Everybody I'm an OT. Had, we'll, that's episode 36. Actually. Yeah, I want, I want the people to like me to start off, right? So I'm an occupational therapist. So I graduated from uh, the famous uh, Duval College, which, by the way, is now a university as of this year. So we're very excited about mm -hmm. that. I'm a uh, I'm from Buffalo. My brother, John, uh, is from Buffalo, and we both started uh, Sabo. And it's a funny story. Do you actually know how Sabo started? No, uh, okay. I, I don't, but I, I, I'm sure you're probably on their alumni page somewhere. Yeah, you know, I got a lot of LinkedIn contacts with them. We like to work out with them a lot and do some fun things. So uh, going home is always always a treat. So tell us how, it, uh, how this whole thing got started. Yeah, so after graduating from Duval, did a stint uh, at a skilled nursing facility for about a year in Connecticut. And then uh, went to Burke Rehab Hospital, where I did uh, a few years there at White Plains, New York. That was an awesome experience. I love Burke. Mm -hmm. That's where you learn um, how to do inpatient rehab, outpatient rehab. Uh, you focus on all different diagnoses as you get more educated, from stroke to brain injury to cardiopulmonary pulm pulmonary to uh, amputee. So it wasn't until I was an outpatient. I had a uh, client who, um, it was a pediatric stroke. The mom came in, Did you, it, and, and the funny part about it, the punchline is it has to do with an oar. That's how Sabo started, mm -hmm. with an oar. And okay. the, the mom came in and said, my son wants to go to summer camp. And he, because he has hemiparesis, which means one side of your body's affected, and he didn't have hand function, he could not hold on to the oar. So when the kids were um, canoeing, the hand would slip off the oar. So as an occupational therapist, we learned to adapt, uh, get creative, use adaptive equipment, assistive technology. So I took a water glove, and I had a Velcro and loop and hook sewn onto it and attached it to a uh, little sleeve of thermoplastic material and had the sleeve go over the oar. 
So when his hand was attached to the oar, it would never come off. It would just slide up and down so he could actually cross the body, kind of like mm. going from one side to the other side. And his hand sure. would stay put. It was just, it was, you know, it was a proud moment as a new OT. Mom was happy. Son was happy. So the oar was sitting in the corner, and I was working with a stroke survivor. The client was laying down on a plinth, and we were working on shoulder strengthening. And suddenly I noticed her arm was really wobbly. It was, it was weak. And I just wanted to work on what's called controlled lowering, where you slowly lower the arm down uh, mm -hmm. from against gravity to uh, gravity assist. And I'm checking out the oar in the corner. I go, huh, this might be interesting. So I said, humor me. Put this oar between your legs to this wonderful uh, woman. And she gave me a look. And I said, put your hand on this gliding sleeve. And I want you to glide up and down with this oar. And her arm went from uh, very unstable, weak, uh, wobbly to controlled, um, what's called open chain movements. And the light bulb went off. I go, holy cow. Look at the difference in her arm movements. So long story short, that product became known as the Sabo Glide eventually. Uh, so my brother and I created that product together. And we had to start a company. And we'll save this for another podcast, but we, we started a company. We called it affordable therapy equipment back in the day. Now, this was, mind you, this was just to have drinking money on the weekends mm -hmm. and, and help a few patients along the way. Most and companies are started for the very same reason. Yes, yes. So we <laughs> called it affordable therapy equipment. Within one week, we raised prices and changed the name to semi-affordable therapy equipment. Uh, just kidding, of course. And our first customer was Burke Rehab Hospital. They bought 12 of them for their stroke class. And then we went online wow. and sold them. And, and obviously, most of, us, most of the folks that know Sabo know us for the hand devices, but it started with the Sabo Glide. I'm new to A, the industry, and, and B, I've been familiar with Sabo for the last year or so. I think there's a couple things that are going to be the premises of the program, and I want to tee that up, and we're not going to go into them here in this first episode. The idea is just to hook our future listeners here. But in addition to very innovative products, right, that, that when people put them on, their reactions are quite stunning. Like I haven't been able to walk for six years or pick up a cup of coffee, and after 30 days, I'm able to do all these things. I've got my life back, right? Those are hugely joyful stories. But Henry, one of the other reasons we're doing this podcast is because you and the other folks that, that you've worked with in the industry are challenging some of the basic theories in neuro rehab, right? The right. fact that that many of them are outdated, both from a product standpoint, what tools are they using, but also just a technique standpoint. So we want to challenge those, those theories and, and bring new opportunities to light for both therapists as well as patients and their caregivers. So our, our goal at the end of every one of these episodes is for a patient to say to themselves, hmm, I didn't know that was available. Or wow, that patient really inspired me. I'd like to learn more. And I'm going to go ask my therapist or I'm going to do some more research online if I'm not currently in therapy and find out what's out there. Right? I'm going to be re-energized to get back out there and, and take control of my life. The other audience is, is therapists themselves. right? I know as a, as a, a leader in businesses, I need to be constantly learning. Uh, whether it's reading books on stroke rehab or how to run a business or whatever, if I'm not constantly learning what's out there, I'm failing my company. So same thing with therapists. Right, absolutely. How do we continue to yeah, challenge them to seek new methodologies and protocols for treatment? And then caregivers, if you're listening, you should be peppering both, right? Both your therapist and your, your loved one on, on what can we learn to help you along the way. So um, before we wrap up our, our initial episode, Henry, I'm going to ask you to, to kind of give everybody a hint of what's coming. Yeah, well, What the heck does neuroplasticity mean? Yeah, so I don't like to start off, um, you know, it's kind of like you're on a first date and you're already ranting, okay? But forgive me, <laughs> but I need to rant a little. Rant. So, so the, the show is called No Plateau Podcast, right? And the yep. biggest problem is, and I've been saying this for years and a lot of our colleagues uh, agree, uh, but there's some that don't. And, and the problem is patients do not plateau. Treatment options plateau patients. I mean, if you really just unpack that. Athletes. Now, are we going to have many plateaus? Of course. Mm -hmm. Performers. Athletes. They're having many plateaus all the time. I call it this ladder of success or ladder of recovery. And we're trying to build on each rung. So think of a golfer. Think of golfers who play on a weekly basis. They plateau all the time. But then they edit. They change. And then they pursue and they punch through to the next rung. 
Think of musicians. Think of as a husband. I plateau all the time. Just ask my wife, right? But I pivot. I edit. As a dad, I do it too. And I improve. So stroke survivors will plateau. I know it's called No Plateau Podcast, but these are mini setbacks. This is not permanent plateaus. Neuroplasticity does not have an expiration date. You Mm -hmm. can positively rewire your brain or negatively rewire your brain today or 30 years post-injury. Okay, it's not like it shuts off after the time runs out. So the issue is, it is very convenient for some health professionals, of course, insurance companies, to tell patients that there's no more we can do for you, no more progress can be made. And obviously, given the constraints of the healthcare reimbursement structure, of course, they're going to plateau. They're getting 30 30 to 60 minutes three times per week. The real recovery will happen at home. So yes, you're going to have these mini setbacks, and and in many episodes, we'll be talking about how the brain recovers. We'll be bringing on awesome, smart guests, and they'll be talking about the different stages of stroke. They'll be mentioning how when you suffer a stroke and you go through this cortical shock, yes, the lesion area dies and won't return, but the surrounding area of that lesion, the technical term is penumbra, that surrounding area will be reactivated. And it'll happen over a couple months, and then the brain will start to uh, rewire through uh, evidence-based treatment techniques, which we'll be discussing in later episodes. And then as that occurs, of course, new improvements will be made. If those things aren't done, heck yeah, you're going to plateau. But guess what? That plateau will only last until you get better therapy. And I sure hope in some of these episodes we talk about how to interview your therapist to make sure you're getting the best therapy possible. So in short, uh, Pete, neuroplasticity is a beautiful thing. We do it positively and negatively on a, on a minute-by-minute basis. And stroke survivors are no different than athletes or musicians or performers. And there's so much to be uh, improved when it comes to cortical reorganization. And we'll talk about that on, on future episodes. That's great. So neuroplasticity is actually that rewiring of the brain, as Harry yep. mentioned. That's what that, that term means. And yep. you mentioned, you know, great athletes. I think of Michael Jordan. I mean, uh, not Michael Jordan, but Tiger Woods, yep. right? Tiger Woods had probably the greatest golf game in the history of the game, and he completely rewired his swing. Absolutely. Which meant he had to teach his brain and his muscles and his entire neural system to do things differently and unlearn and then relearn to break through a plateau. A lot of people thought he was crazy. He went on to win, I think, another 10 majors after doing that. So it's just, it's just remarkable. Yep. Um, Henry, thanks for the, uh, the hint at what's coming, and Carly for helping us kick off this very first episode. Um, we look forward to many more. We'll probably be doing two of these a month, partly guests uh, as therapists, partly guests are really champion stroke survivors as well and sharing their stories and how they broke through. So we look forward to seeing you on the next episode of the No Plateau podcast. Well, thank you, Pete. And I want to finish this episode with a special tribute to a friend, a uh, researcher, a uh, physical therapist, Pete Levine. He recently passed away, and he was a big fan of Sabo, and we were a big fan of Pete. He was a purveyor of stroke rehab. And uh, we met him back in 2004 when he, when he came to one of our Sabo courses. And uh, his book, Stronger After Stroke, I highly recommend that book. Um, We're going to reference a lot of stuff that Pete has uh, done as far as his work. He was great. He was a great messenger and he was a great uh, champion for stroke rehab. And we're going to miss him a lot, but we'll we'll be sure to uh, uh, honor him through many episodes and referencing a lot of his great stuff that he compiled. So um, for the folks listening, I highly recommend to get his Stronger After Stroke book. Well said. It was the first book you recommended I read, and, and it's it's uh, it's written so that someone who has no knowledge can walk away with really incredible learning. So it's not a highly technical uh, book. It's it's an incredibly powerful book as well. So thanks for bringing that up, Henry, and, and you're right. Pete will be missed, but we'll do our best to carry that on. So, all right, Carly, Henry, thanks again, and we'll see you guys in the next episode. Sounds great. Take care, guys. Hey.